Another late night out here on the homestead. I want to give y'all a quick little rundown of some of my cycads, things that are pretty cool, ancient in nature, and uh, I think they deserve just uh, their own video and moment of appreciation. This is my cardboard fern. It's finally coming back, y'all. It got bit a little bit in the winter. We have some pretty harsh winters sometimes. I just saw it growing back, super exciting. I use this uh, rock here to mark it. This is my Dayun spinulosum, yet another family of cycad. I have several species of cycads here on the premises. This was a beautiful cycad bulb that I was able to acquire from somebody who cleaned off their main trunk and it's already generated foliage. This is still young tender growth, but yeah, that's super tender. Now I'm gonna pull the weeds around it to kind of give it some space. That way, when it comes time to edge up the yard and stuff, I won't have any risk of accidentally nicking because these are actually pretty soft when they're young. So these will get a lot larger than that even. But I just want to show you how I dress our front steps to our house. A lot of cycads. Now the weeds here, because of the watering, the weeds just, they find a way. Life will find a way. Isn't that an old famous saying from a movie? You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. A very unusual species of cycad over here. Um, this is one of about five different varieties and I have a sixth one that I'm trying to grow from seed. I'm not real familiar with it. Let's see if I can get some seeds. This is where I planted the seeds to those cycads. It says rare cycad. Um, I'll show you what the seeds look like. And I'm not sure if I'll have any luck because I didn't see both male and female parts to that species. So I'm guessing it probably won't grow, but if it does, it'll be a super awesome reward. Pretty cool, here they are, here's one. So I don't know if it's fertilized or not, it's worth the experiment and I certainly would love to have that in my collection. Now they are hard, they call them cardboard ferns. It is a member of the cycad family, but uh, once again, you know, a string trimmer or weed eater can do a lot of damage to a lot of things. Look at this y'all, the plague is real. The plague is real. And that actually is one of the number one reason why a lot of young trees don't make it for the first couple months of their life because people with those string trim trimmers come through there and they take off bits of trunk and they don't realize that that kills the tree. I want to show you these Kuntis. I haven't had the greatest luck with Kuntis. I have two different varieties. I have Zamia Pumilia and Zamia Florididae. And then these are my other Zamias or Kuntis. Um, they're a little sunburnt right now, which I feel kind of bad about. But uh, they were on my porch and they were getting a lot more burnt and I moved into the shade. And now I'm moving back out to the nursery. Trimmers come through there and they take off bits of trunk and they don't realize that that kills the tree. You're constricting it. It's the same thing as a girdling root. It's called girdling the tree. So I'm still gonna place my stone back here in order to make sure that I don't forget that's there. Zamia florididae, which is another species of kunti that is actually native here to Florida, which is cool to know some of your ancient roots. And this larger sago palm here has regenerated lots of new fronds also. And a spider made its nest here. And the love bugs are just crazy. This is what they look like around my door. But this spider web has caught thousands of them right here inside of my sago palm. All of these were orphans. They're all about three, three and a half feet tall. You can see a lot of them have already generated new foliage. I have about six out here on the perimeter. This is Cycus revoluta. It's probably the most prolific of all the cycad species that I have. It is also known as the king sago. It is a pretty large species of sago. Usually not larger than 10 feet, but can get up to 15 feet sometime. Uh, I think that they're somewhat adapted at this point to the sun, but uh, they're gonna have to regenerate new foliage to look all bright and green again. And cool, this one's actually growing back. I didn't think I was gonna be able to show you all these, but you know, with the car, it makes it a little easier. So I'm just driving around. Here's where I keep some of my potted plants. And my last bit of sagos right here. These were some bulbs that I found. Somebody was throwing them away. 
This is my largest Psychus Revoluta that I do have at around four feet. I'm trying to build an ecosystem here and turn these woods into a forest. So when you pull in my driveway, I wanted to adorn the front of my property with Seikos because they're so ancient and mysterious. Uh, you know, I wanted to look like you're pulling into Jurassic Park. What do they got in there, King Kong? Well, it really wasn't even woods. It was just these large trees and somebody had kept it clear. And I don't like that. I like natural, full, multi-diverse ecosystem because these things are from the times of dinosaurs. And I'm gonna truly test the hardiness of sago palms right here. Both these sago palms lost, one lost 90% of the roots and one was cut completely off. All right, that is really my last sago. It looks pretty pitiful, huh? In fact, this one was cut completely off. And I wouldn't have even tried the experiment if it wasn't for that really bright green growth already coming out of the top, which made me question, these are some sagos that are growing up through the bottom and they were all cut off the main stem of another sago. I actually acquired these from somebody who did this. Will it grow roots? Is this tree really dead? I don't know, but it's worth trying and giving it a shot at life because all life is precious. Oh, almost forgot one. Right there in my natural ecosystem, I did add one sago that was also cut off and wasn't looking too good. Those are both experiments, but it's worth giving them a shot, you say? But I did get that sago also, and that was another one that only had about 10% of roots left. Oh, actually, I forgot I have a bunch right there. Cycads are ancient plants with a long fossil history. Formerly, they were more abundant and diverse than they are today. They are cone-bearing, usually exhibiting pinnate leaves. Contrary to popular belief, they are related to gymnosperms, not palm trees. They are often mistaken for palm trees and ferns. Typically, they are pollinated by a very specialized beetle. With the progression of large cone-bearing trees like conifers and broadleaf trees like angiosperms, they are being pushed out of their natural ranges. They are very long-lived species with some specimens being over a thousand years old. They are dioecious, meaning that their pollination requires both male and female plants. The cycad fossil record dates to the early Permian, 280 million years ago. These plants had a good foothold on Pangaea, and when the continents separated into Gondwanaland and Eurasia, they still existed, giving them a worldwide distribution. Cycads are an endangered species due to loss of their natural environments and being pushed out by taller, faster growing trees. This is the age of the Anthropocene, the age of humans. We can help preserve these species. Keep them in your garden and cherish them. Hey, if you like that video, please hit that subscribe button and that like button it helps a lot. And welcome to the homestead.